It is Reformation. And so on these high festivals, we come out and we, we bring our best and we come together and we celebrate something, something kind of important for us. Reformation was and is not a new thing. What's interesting about humanity is from the minute we left the Garden of Eden, we've had this interesting shape of our lives. It looks like this. And it just keeps rolling along. Now, if you're a historian, that's kind of a good thing and that you can see a pattern about humanity. We start off doing really well together, and then something happens, and we forget God, and we crash. And then God comes in, and he recovers us, and we end up improving, and we're on a high note, and then we're sitting there, and then we forget the Lord and what he's done, and we crash. And it happens over and over and over again. Now, for some, these turnings back up are called reformations. Some call them revivals. Some call them a correction in the market. But we have these ups and downs that just seem to follow us. And so today is a remembrance, hoping that we can recognize as a people where we are in the slope, because it seems to always be happening and always in for us. So think in your mind, where are we on this arc as a country, as a civilization? Where are we? So it's important for us to talk about this every year, to talk about the basics of the faith, because... It wasn't a rediscovery, or it wasn't a new thing, I should say, uh, the Reformation, revivals, the correction. It never has been. God has done the exact same uh, uh, works with us. He said the exact same things with us, Ab absolutely back to the very beginning. What it is is a rediscovery, a rediscovery. And, and to be honest with you, I have a hard time telling between the new thing and schizophrenia sometimes. Uh, when it comes to faith, it's the same over and over and over again, right? If you've ever been to seminary, um, some of you have, I have, uh, you will write a paper, let's say, that's two pages long, and there's 40 pages of citation because someone's already said it before. Nothing is new under the sun. God has, uh, has addressed the same issue over and over again. So today, why don't we do this? The Reformation rediscovered some essential truths or solas about humanity, about our condition, okay? Sola or onlys. So it cut it down to some very basic principles about life and God. And so let's take a look at those again today. Let's take a look at what makes us who we are and what God has done for us. So fun stuff. Let's get on it. First, we rebel against God's. We just rebel against him. And I'm not exactly sure why. We rebel against the Lord. If you could click on that for me, please. Um, I think we need to be in it for me to control it. So there. Now, Luann had one. Chris had one. Now I have one. Um, so we're all caught up. So we rebel against the Lord. We just rebel. From the, from the Garden of Eden, when God put us in there, he said, you can do anything you want, but just don't eat out of that tree, and we ate out of that tree. We rebel against the Lord. There's something about us from the very beginning that does this. Now, it was hard for me to understand this uh, to start until I had kids. Now, I don't remember ever doing anything wrong growing up, but when I had my kids, what's the first thing, what's the first word a, a child learns? Yeah, yeah, you see how quick that was? It's no. There's an original piece, this rebellion, that we call it original sin that's in us, that from the very beginning, it's all mine. It's all mine. I want to do what I want to do. It's all mine. If we don't teach a kid how to share, they never will. That's not part of our programming. There's something about humanity that we must teach and coach and, and surround people with. Okay, so... Okay, well, did you know you even rebel against your own self? It's a very distinctly human thing. I know I should eat better. I know I should exercise. I know I should go here or do this and that, but I don't. I know the good I ought to do, but I don't. What's up with that? I mean, I can rebel against others, but why can't we control ourselves? <laughs> it, we are so much in a rebellious state, we can't even listen to ourselves. How sad is that? No other creature on the planet has that condition but us. Isn't this crazy? Surely, surely, mm, surely 
From the minute I was born, surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the very beginning. Isn't that absolutely crazy that we were like that? From the very beginning, we were sinful. And this is just what we are. And it's very frustrating, isn't it? Uh, That this is the way it is. But that's just the way it is, isn't it? Well, not only do we rebel against the Lord, we are also blind and dead in sin. We are blind and dead in sin. We oftentimes don't even see our weaknesses, or we ignore them, or we cover them up. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. When we were in the Garden of Eden back in the day, all you biblical scholars, and we we took of the fruit, and the very first time God came to spend time with us, what happened? What did we do? We covered ourselves up and we hid. When we are exposed to the light, when we know we've done something wrong, when we know what we're doing isn't good, we want to hide it. We want to lie about it. We want to pass guilt. There's something in us that that we just want to cover it up. We're blind to it, and we are dead in sin. We want to cover this piece up, and it starts to to fuel us, and it begins a series of lies, and it just starts to, to roll inside of us, and it just makes things worse and worse and worse. And we have that condition. And it isn't God who hides himself for us. We hide ourselves from him. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about God saying the Ten Commandments, saying the commandments to the people. Oftentimes, people think Moses went up to get them. That is incorrect. God spoke to all the people from the mountain, the Ten Commandments. But when they heard him speaking, they collapsed on the ground and covered their ears and said, stop talking to us. We'll send someone to you. They just couldn't stand to hear his voice or be in his presence because of who they were. And so we have this major problem, don't we? So not only are we blind to it, but we're also dead in it. For the wages of sin is death, and the sting of death is sin. So... Let's just cover this really simply. You are mortal as human beings. What does that mean? You're going to die, right? We're on a timeline. God is eternal. What does that mean for him? He was, is, and will always be. So if you're separated from God, if you've covered yourself and turned yourself away from him, and you're not connected to God, what does that mean for you? You're done. You're done. So the wages of sin, which causes us to turn away from God, to causes us to try and try and cover things up and keep us away from Him and to not have that strong relationship, actually is what's doing us in. That'll do us in now and it'll do us in in the end. And so this is a huge problem. We are blind and dead in our sin. And and I'm going to tell you, we are all in it together, folks. We are all in this mess together. For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. Not a one of us are are outside of this. And this is really going to cause a problem now because we can't turn to one another to save one another. Now, we can get support, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but we're in it. When it comes to salvation, we're all in it together. And there's something... Man, there's something we say all the time. If I could just remember. Well, anyway. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Uh, people ask, where do you get all those words in your service? Right out of the Bible. <laughs> we just repurpose the scriptures and saying in a certain order, that's how we get our service. Right? We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If you think you're perfect or good enough or I'm mostly good, You're being deceived. And if we claim we have not sinned, we make Jesus out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. Ouch. (laughs) Because Jesus came for sinners, and if you're not a sinner, he didn't come for you. That's a problem. Okay, so we rebel against the Lord. We are blind and dead in our sin. We are all in it together. And not only are we stuck in this condition, but we are slaves to it. We are slaves to the sin. So how does this work? 
Now, this is called human frailty, and there are some who would exploit that human frailty, but let me just draw it out for you. There are many lowercase lords in the world that cry out for your attention. There are addictions, there are hobbies, there are interests that just want to draw you away from what's important so that you're only hearing from them. And, and cell phones and technology only amplifies this effect, right? They're screaming for your attention, just screaming all the time. They, they smear it all over everything. You hear it. They try and draw you away. They want to control. They want to bring you in. And when you're truly hardly addicted into one thing or another, it's hard to escape that. So not only does it affect you a little, it turns them into lords themselves. Humanity likes to fall head over heels over these things. And it's a human frailty. It's what we are. And so Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. It drives us. We listen to it. We ignore the good. Um, One of the... (laughs) One of the best things God ever did when we left the Garden of Eden, he said, here you go, have some kids. Good luck. Have some kids that you love to death who don't listen to you, who you want to only help but won't listen to you. We are wrapped into all the other, the bits of this world, and so we start to lose our voice, right? We turn our ear away from the thing that loves us most. And it gets us, right? We are, we are drawn right into it. And here's the thing. We can do nothing about it. All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our, filthy, or all our, our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. We can do nothing about it. We're all in together. We know nothing about it. So I thought I would do is uh, bring up this most excellent example. I brought a bit of sewage into the church. Now, it's mine. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's an example of mine. Uh, it smells really bad. There's a little bit of fecal matter in it. There is viruses. There's all sorts of nasty inside of this. This is sewage. Would any of you like to come up and take a drink? No? Okay. This is a huge pitcher of water I just poured out of our wonderful sink. It is perfectly fine. It is crystal clear. It's ready to go. Would any of you like a drink out of this? Yeah. Okay. Well, I will take just a little half spoon of sewage, and I'll pour it in here. Not much. Just a little spoon. Let's let it articulate a little. I'll just kind of... There we go. Would anyone like a drink of this water? Why not? You see, whether it's a bunch or a little, it's still sewage. Right? A barrel of sewage is sewage. A barrel of fine wine with a spoonful of sewage is sewage. So whether you think you're full and rife with sin or you're just, I'm pretty much okay. I'm pretty good. We still have a problem because I can't purify either one of this because they're both sewage. They cannot clean themselves. We need someone else, right? We need outside help because we're all in it together. We are all in it together. And then on top of that, (laughs) we can no no good at all. Now, I... Okay, don't think I'm just taking you down, okay? I'm not not just taking you down, because we're going to go back in just a second, and we're going to read these same scriptures again, except I'm going to show you the whole scripture. I've just been taking out the first parts. So uh, we're going to go back and look at all of these. But just to top it all off, Jesus says, and you can do no good at all anyway. What does he mean by that? Jesus says, I am the true vine. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words... Have you ever tried to grow fruit in this town? You know how hard it is? Disease and cold and bugs and the squirrels that take one bite out and then just go throw it on the ground. It's hard to grow fruit. Good fruit. Nourishing good things. It's hard. And God says, you cannot produce it. I produce it. So who gets credit? So even though you think you do good, who's actually working that through you? God. So we can't even claim that. So what does that put us as human beings? 
at this point. <laughs> Ouch, right? Ouch. Well, I'm no fancy city preacher. As a matter of fact, I'm the grandson of a poor dirt farmer. But I want to know, what's the answer to all this then? What's the answer to all this? Because it is the doom of all men that we forget this. And the cycles begin. All right, let's go back to them again and see what the answer is. Uh, mostly I'll just continue the scripture, but other times I slip in the answer. So here we go. Surely I was sinful at birth. Remember, we started there. But then Jesus comes and says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. What's the answer in this case? Christ. Okay, all right, all right. No fancy city preacher. I'm just trying to pick this up. Next. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who's the answer to this one? Is it Jesus? Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe there's a pattern here. I don't know. Let's just keep going. The sting of death is sin. But continuing the verse, but thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What's the answer to this one? <laughs> wow, I, I, I'm just uh, For all have sinned and fall short of so the glory of God, it says, and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came from Christ Jesus. What's the answer to this one? <laughs> um, yeah. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God or Jesus is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. What's the answer to this one? <laughs> Jesus. Man, I... I... All right, uh, maybe. That, let's see if we can find something else. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And then he went on to say, if the Son, Jesus, sets you free, you will be free indeed. Who's the answer to this one? I know, I know. Not a fancy city preacher. I'm just trying to figure this out myself. All right, here's the next one. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our filthy right, our acts are like filthy rags. There's nothing we can do. But then, <laughs> what does Paul remind us? For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not from yourselves. You can do nothing, so you will do nothing. And if you think you can save yourself, <laughs> good luck. It is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Who would be the answer to this one? Uh, Jesus and what he's doing. Okay, fine. Let's just keep moving on. Jesus said, I am the true vine. No branch can bear fruit apart from me, right? Fruit by itself. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. So who's going, uh, what's the answer to that problem? Jesus. <laughs> So, what's the answer here? I, I, it's not a fancy sermon. It's not a long sermon. <laughs> I, I'm just following along. Why don't we let Jesus answer it himself? I am the way and the truth and the life. Period. And it's a wonderful thing to know we have a way. And that is what we have. Isn't that cool? And so, one of the basics of our faith is Christ Jesus, solo Christ, Christ Jesus alone. Amen. And we thank him for it. Amen.